Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to New Horizons Christian Church. Can you hear me okay? Yes, is that loud enough? Ken said no. She said yes. How about, well, that's not gonna work. How about now? Is that good? Okay, sorry, is that, is that too much? <laughs> So, okay, well, good morning. Uh, before we start worship today, I have some things to share uh, about all the ways we're living out our faith here. We have a, a lot of things going on. And let me just first say to all of the people who put on the spaghetti dinner last night, thank you, and I can't believe you're here. <laughs> but I am glad you are. Um, that is, the spaghetti dinner is great, and that's a lot of work. So, um, Thank you all for all that you did for that. Um, I want to start off making sure that I bring special attention to this table up here. Um, I have talked about it before, but up here there are examples of four meals for a month for our backpack program. The backpack program feeds, is it 17 families, 17, 18 families up at Betty Jane, every weekend so they get a meal to help get them through the weekend when they're not getting food from school during the week so um, Helen and a group of people they come in during the week and they get the backpacks ready to go Helen does a lot of shopping to uh, get all the ingredients for meals and then every Friday those kids get to take home a meal to help feed their family um, you can bring in donations for that, but honestly, it costs $20 to feed a family for a month. So if you're interested in helping out that ministry um, and you want to give money to that and feed a family for a month, you can uh, put that in the offering plate. Just note that it's for the backpacks, or you can um, just drop money off any time at the church or send it, or you can do it through the Givelify app. Uh, however you do it, just mark it for the backpack program. But we're trying to do more and uh, we're trying to make what we're doing here for missions a little more visible for everyone because um, there's a lot that happens, which is fantastic, that so much happens out there. Uh, but when we don't get to see it, sometimes we don't know about it. So I'm trying to do better about making sure that we're all aware of all the things that this church is doing. And so the backpack program, a very, very important program, is just one of the many missions we do here. And of course, it's another opportunity for you to be involved to help feed kids and their families. So um, that's what all of this is up there. And if you have any other questions about it, Helen is standing in the back she is happy to answer any question about that anytime she said with a big smile she's got a big smile um, the second thing I wanted to bring to everyone well yeah to everyone's attention is uh, we are doing this thing at this church called secret sisters and uh, we draw names and we pray for each other throughout the whole year um, and so I just want to remind everyone that is participating in that ministry that there is a table back there outside of the sanctuary where people can drop stuff off uh, gifts for their secret sister thank you cards uh, for gifts they received um, but you might not always get a gift. <laughs> the main focus of this ministry is to know that someone is praying for you every day for the whole year. The gifts and the cards and stuff are extra. And yes, it is nice to receive those, but not everybody has the same means and abilities to show that outwardly. So if you are a part of the Secret Sisters and you don't receive anything or um, you, know, you have questions about who your Secret Sister is and what's going on, just let me know. But just remember that the focus of this ministry is that women are praying for each other every single day and that is a very power power very powerful thing uh, for each one of us to know um, and the gifts and the cards are just the icing on the cake so um, if you don't get anything don't worry but if you do have any questions please uh, see me about that um, Terry do you want to 
come on up here. Terry has something to share about our uh, women's group event that's going on next weekend. And then I have just a few more things. So, yes, please. I know. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so the women's group, we now have a name. We are called the Women of Strength Group. Um, so it just symbolizes us that together we can do anything. With that being said, I would like to thank everybody who donated to the Hope Totes. I delivered all of that to huge boxes full of personal health hygiene items to the Haven of Rest so that they can get their Hope Totes together for all the homeless people in the area. The next thing I wanted to say was this Saturday is our uh, mocktails and gals painting class. If you have signed up, thank you so much. We are full. Um, if you are coming, please show up on Saturday at 2 o'clock. You do not have to bring anything. Everything is supplied for you. Um, we will have um, some light snacks and some mocktails. And then we will be painting. Plan to be here about three hours. And then starting next Sunday, we are going to start selling our tickets for our women our celebration of women tea that will be held may 20th it's a saturday here at this church in the basement tickets are eight dollars for an adult five dollars for children 12 and under we ask that if you come you please dress for tea you wear a bonnet we will have contests for the most creative hat the best hat and the funniest hat so um, next Sunday, I'll be out there selling those tickets. So if you have any questions, you could see me. You could talk to um, Janine Harvey, Cal Wolf, Kim Stimler, Ke um, Anita Hunter, and Kelly Sloan. We're, they're all helping me with this because I cannot do this on my own. Trust me. So that's all I have for the Women of Strength group. All right. Plenty. Yes. And if you uh, signed up to come on Saturday to the painting and you need a ride or would like a ride, either one way or both ways, let me know and we'll get that figured out for you. Um, the next thing on my list is, <laughs> so Mama Allie's coming out real quick here, church. Let me have a talk with you all. So we're going to have this rummage sale at the end of April. What this rummage sale is, is an opportunity for people to clean out their stuff that they're not using anymore and sell it and make money for themselves and help bring in money from this for this church. What this rummage sale is not <laughs> is an opportunity to bring in all your junk and dump it at the church and expect the trustees to get rid of it when it doesn't sell. I tried to think of a nicer way to say that. But y'all are grown-ups. You can take it, right? Our trustees, our trustees do so much at this church. They do so much behind the scenes taking care of things, and they are so willing to help. So I am a little bit protective of our trustees having more put on them than they should. So if you are interested in bringing stuff to the rummage sale, you need to talk to Rose, and you need to be responsible for your stuff. <laughs> so that the trustees, they will have a few things that they're getting rid of from around the church, and that'll be out by the garage. But the trustees will not have a table that you can just drop stuff off at. They will not be responsible for taking your stuff and taking it elsewhere afterwards. They're taking care of their things, and that's all I'm asking them to do that day. So if you're participating in the, in the rummage sale and you have any questions about all those things, see Russ, Rose about it, because she and Diane are in charge of it, not the trustees. So I'm sorry for being, I had, I'm sorry for being a mom, but too bad. Um, I love my trustees, and we could not do this church without them. I mean, crazy. So, again, let's 
be <laughs> careful with our rummage that we're trying to sell <laughs> and where it goes afterwards. Um, the last thing I think that I need to... Uh, Easter flowers. Today's the last day to order Easter flowers. So if you want flowers for Easter, uh, fill out your form and the box is in the back underneath the nursery cry room window uh, that you can put that. Pat's back there by it. You can put your order forms back there. Sound good? Okay. I think I covered everything on my list in probably more than I intended, but that's okay. We've got a lot going on. We got to make sure everybody's in the loop. Um, okay. Well, one of the most important ways we live out our faith is by coming together for worship every week to build up the body of Christ. So now that we have shared all the things we're doing outside, let us come to be together in a time of worship inside this sacred place. Let us begin by going together to going to God together in prayer. God, here we are again. It's us. Your disciples trying to do the best we can every day by being your love and your warmth and support and friendship and laughter out in this world. We come here this day to build up our spirit, build up our faith, build up one another so that we can be the people you're calling us to be. Be with us as we go through this place and space feeding and nourishing our spirits so that we can go out and continue to be the people you're calling us to be, one day at a time, wherever that may lead us to whoever that may lead us. So let us meet you here so that we can take you out there when we go. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty, our God is here, we're here, let's sing his praises. Would you please stand? Great is the Lord.
talks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their sea the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share Please have a seat. Worship and wonder, yes? Anybody going to worship and wonder? <laughs> We're also inviting anyone back that wants to observe, possibly they want to be one of our worship and wonder leaders. That's right. If anybody who has any interest in uh, being a worship and wonder leader, possibly, you are invited to come to worship and wonder today with this most spectacular, amazing, awesome young lady and observe. So, anybody else? Okay. Are you ready to pray? Yeah. Okay. Um, dear God. Dear God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this church. Thank you. Thank you for Miss Rose. Thank you for Miss Rose. And thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Amen. Amen. All right, you have a good time. Sorry. I said it's just like riding bikes. Just like riding a bike. I haven't done that in a long time either. But yes. In the beginning, right? In the beginning, what? God. Elohim. It all begins with the Lord. And the Lord's love for us. And the Lord's revelation of who He is through His works which reveal his will, which reveal his word. He in, in his word, he instructs us. Yes, it's true. When he revealed his word and will to Moses, he spoke to him from the burning bush as the power, you know, of the Lord, the most uh, high. But to you and to me, he speaks as a mother and <laughs> as a father, right? And the key word is instruction. He instructs us. He instructs us about how to worship. And of course, that includes in our prayers, and that includes our thanksgiving, and it includes our giving. This has all been ordained by the Lord. In fact, uh, in Psalm 19, it talks about the instructions of the Lord, the Torah, the instructions. And one of those instructions is an ordinance. You know, he, he ordains that we worship in praise and thanksgiving, and he has ordained it's part of the ordination that we Return his grace. Uh, we spoke of glory in the song, or saying of glory in the song. We return his glory through singing. Some of us do that better than others, right? Uh, so forth. But anyway, uh, we return his glory through returning what he's entrusted to us. 
The Apostle Paul called this in the eighth chapter of 2 Corinthians a grace, the grace of giving. And in that chapter, he encourages believers, the Corinthian church, to grow in their giving. He referred to the churches of, of uh, Galatia and how they gave out, not of their abundance, but out of their poverty. They went beyond what they were able to do, what they thought they were able to do. That's our challenge, isn't it? In, in all the things that we do in response to our love to the Lord, we grow, and we are to grow in our giving beyond what we think we can do. You know why? Because in Christ we've received that inheritance, the riches of his glory. And we are drawing upon those riches. And to put it in another way, we have a share in his inheritance. None of us knows what's in that inheritance. We don't know the extent of it. And we draw from that in our giving. Uh, we follow his instructions and we grow. And sometimes that means we respond to a challenge. Sometimes that means we respond to the still small voice within us, our spirit, and saying, do this. Give this, give that. I, I, I may have used the illustration before, so forgive me um, for repeating myself, but I was visiting at uh, Akron General and a lady, uh, crossing from the parking deck, a lady approached me and asked if I could give her some money for food. And I had two bucks in my pocket. And I said, no, I'm sorry, I can't. That sounds cruel, doesn't it? It gets worse. When I went over to, later, when I went over to Children's Hospital, I'm not kidding you one bit, on the sidewalk was a $20 bill. And I thought, I was so cheap. I thought my ability was limited to the $2 in my pocket. And the Lord had already provided more than I needed, see? So we draw upon the riches of his glory as we give, and we keep continuing to give beyond what we thought we could do. You, you think about that in your life, what, what you're doing now, what you've accomplished, and so forth, and you compare to when you started out, isn't it amazing? In fact, we have so much that some of that stuff is junk. Yeah. <laughs> Rummage to me. Rummage. Yeah. <laughs> And I promise not to bring any junk. I'll bring some rummage, right? Yep. God bless. Let's uh, sing, our, sing our offering, offering him. Yes. Amazing Grace. Perfect song. While the deacons come forward. Would you please stand? Praise.
Praise God the from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We are in our fourth week of Lent already. It's flying by. And this week, as we continue our series, Lent in Plain Sight, our ordinary item this week is shoes. Did you lose me? Oh, there we go. Okay. Good thing now at the beginning, right? <laughs> I was like I was sitting up here thinking, oh, if I had been on it, I could have like had Sam play. These boots were meant for walking, and that's just what they'll do. But then I, I'm too late. But you could sing that in the back of your mind. I'll probably be singing that all day now. So, but today we're talking about shoes. And the scripture uh, we're reading that goes with today's um, message comes from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The first thing that comes to mind when I read this scripture is about how I get ready for the day. When I wake up in the morning, I think about my routine, and it always starts with coffee. First thing first, coffee. I'm even so picky that... I set the coffee machine the night before. If my coffee machine doesn't have a timer so it's not waiting for me, I'm kind of grumpy. Coffee is a must, first thing. So I get my coffee and then I have my time with God. Um, I have my notebook and my journal and my devotion. And then at some point, I usually have to take my kid to school. He needs to get there. He's always running late. so. But at some point, he's finally ready and we go. Some mornings I exercise, I walk. Some mornings I ride the bike. Some mornings I don't do anything. Every morning I then shower. <laughs> Whether I've exercised or not, I always take a shower. And then I get ready to do whatever I'm going to do that day. But when it comes to getting dressed for the day, the only thing I think about putting on is 
when it comes to putting on my clothes, I think about what I'm going to be doing that day. Where am I going to be going? And how comfortable can I dress <laughs> while doing all the things I need to do that day? If I could wear sweatpants everywhere, I would. Most days, I settle for jeans. The last time when thinking about getting dressed and putting on things for the day, the last time I thought about putting on the armor of God before I left the house was never. <laughs> Probably never before I worked on this message. We don't live in a day and age where soldiers are walking down our streets regularly with their armor on and their shields and swords right? It's not present to us every day. The closest thing we have to that today would be police officers, right? Present in our streets with their bulletproof vest, which oftentimes you can't even see because it's underneath their uniform, right? Unless you have a riot going on. And then they have their riot gear with the vests and the helmet and the shields. That's about as close as we get to seeing armor in our daily lives. But this visual of this armor being put on, just because it doesn't cross my mind that often, because we live in a different world than this text was written, doesn't mean that it is not just as powerful for us today as it was when it was first written. When Paul first wrote this to the hearers of Ephesus, everybody say that, Ephesus. So, see, it's, it's a little more phonetic than you think. So if I mess it up, you'll give me some grace there, right? <laughs> when Paul first wrote this letter, to give it some context, this book was written to God's holy people in Ephesus. This city, and I, I think I've mentioned this before, um, it was a large commercial city uh, in Asia Minor, which is now Turkey, right? And it is um, one, it had a large population and a, it was a major trade route. So a lot of people used Ephesus for travel. And the capital, it was the capital of the Roman province in Asia. And it was considered the gateway to Asia. So it was the center of pagan worship. And there happened to be um, the temple of the Greek goddess Artemis. Uh, that was in this city, which it was considered one of the ancient seven wonders, or one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. And it was just right outside those city limits. So people from across the, the region traveled to Ephesus to visit the temple, to visit this temple. And the blacksmiths, they really liked this because they made a lot of money off of making all of these trinkets and statues of this goddess to sell to people. The theologian N.T. Wright suggests that this book, this letter, may have been written as a circular letter to the church in Ephesus so that it could then be distributed to younger churches in the, reason, in the region. And this letter is different than a lot of the other letters that Paul writes because, like the one to uh, the Corinth, uh, Church of Corinth and the in Galatia, because Paul's not saying, get your act together, you're doing something wrong. Um, it's, it's not uh, a teaching to them. This letter is to build up the strength of this church. So we have Paul, who, and he, when he writes this letter to this church, he's in prison. So he's writing to them from jail, not knowing his outcome, what will happen. And so he wants to make sure that this church, this important church that has so many people are being exposed to, but is also right in the middle of like all this tension, he wants to make sure that this church can make it, that it stays strong. So he instructs this church to put on the full armor of God. So, have you seen that movie, uh, A Christmas Story? Have many of you seen that movie, A Christmas Story, with Ralphie? And you know that scene, um, and if you haven't, I'll try to explain it. I was going to try and show it, but, you know, you just can't see things that well up there. So, I'll, I'll do my best to describe it. 
There's a scene where the mom's getting the youngest brother ready for school, right? And she just keeps putting layers of stuff on him, layers and layers. And so he ends up on this big, puffy snowsuit, and he's got his hood up and his, his hat on, and then she takes the scarf and she wraps it around him so all you see are his eyes, right? And then he starts crying. So he's standing there like this, and he starts crying. And so she, she unwraps him, and she's like, what's wrong? And he's like, I can't put my arms down. And so she takes his arms, and she pushes them down, and they pop up. And then she pushes them down, and they pop back up. And then she goes, well, you can put your arms down when you get to school. So she wraps him back up and sends him on his way, right? Because in winter in Cleveland, her kids had to walk to school. So she wanted to make sure her son was wearing everything he needed, his armor, to protect him to make it to school safely. When my kids were little, I did the same thing. I didn't make it so they couldn't put their arms down. But when they wanted to play in the snow, I made sure they were bundled up and had all their layers on and were protected. As they grew and did other things, I did the same thing. When they were going to go somewhere, I made sure they had all the things they need to be protected. Uh, If it was summer, do you have sunscreen? Are you going swimming? Do you have your towel and your swimsuit and your goggles? When they got older and they would go somewhere on their own, do you have money? Do you have a sweatshirt? What if it gets cold? Do you have dry clothes? Yeah, Mom, we got it. And my response is, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it, right? It was my job to make sure that my kids had all that they needed and were prepared for whatever circumstances they might encounter while they're out in the world. I do the same thing for my husband when he travels. Do you have this? Do you have this? Do you have this? Yes, it's my job, right? Why do I do that? Because I love my family, right? It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. I want them to have the protection and the supplies and the things they need so that when they go out into the world, they can do whatever it is they're being called to do. When we read this scripture, we've got Paul telling the church in Ephesus, is what Paul telling them Is it really much different than what I tell my kids before they go out into the world? When you think about it that way, is it really much different? As a believer in Christ, I don't think so. As a beloved child of God, God wants us to be dressed. God needs us to be clothed for whatever we will encounter in the world. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. We put great care, most of us, (laughs) into our physical clothing, right? We want to be covered, we want to be warm, we want to be dry. I'm guessing many of us Don't leave the house without that every day, right? I mean, I've had bad dreams where I've shown up somewhere naked, but it's just been a dream. Never, ever really happened in life that I'm aware of. (laughs) So why, if we put that much care in our material things, why do I leave the house every day without my spiritual coverings, without my armor? It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Yet how many times do I walk out the door without it? Something that has come up the past several weeks when looking at why we forget things or miss things that are important in our spiritual lives. We've talked about because we get used to the ordinary. We get complacent because... It's not extraordinary. The new is not special. Life has a way of making us forget to set things into the extraordinary category. And instead, we get used to it, and it's just ordinary. 
I was in a clergy group meeting. I meet with a couple of different cl clergy groups uh, once a month, and it's really wonderful to talk about what's going on in other churches. And one pastor shared with me that in his church, um, they are a smaller church and an older congregation. He said, but they've got this new member. They've got this young man there that is a new Christian. He's just discovered God. He's just discovered Christ in his life, and he wants to know everything. He's joining every class, and he wants to know more, and he wants, he wants people to share. He wants a place to keep going to experience this extraordinary more and more and more. And the pa uh, pastor said, this new person, this new Christian, has brought so much new energy to this church, it's contagious. He said, it's like I have a church full of new Christians again. <laughs> one person, one person, because of their new faith and all this energy they have with that new faith, it's causing new life in this church of people who have been Christians for 50 and 60 and 70 years. A church filled with people who have gotten used to the ordinary and forget to see the extraordinary. I know I've said this before, but every single day is new. No matter how old you are, you have never ever lived this day before. It's new, it's brand new. No matter how many times you have done something before, you have never done it as the person you are today. Never. No, how many, no matter how many times you have sat in these pews, you have never sat here as the person you are today. And you've never sat with the same exact group of people ever. We've never sat here and been in worship and sang these same exact songs the way we have today. Every single day, we are new. And yet, when we get ready for our day, how often do we just go into the ordinary? How often do we forget to put on this whole armor of God so that we can be prepared to be this new creation God is calling us to be? I have not been good about considering it, that's for sure because every day has become ordinary and I have forgot that I have never lived this day before. How extraordinary is that? The author of our devotional that we're using, Lent in Plain Sight, she gives this powerful statement about shoes. And uh, on the handout you have, I've given you different scriptures and different uh, quotes from her book that she draws attention to, and about all these different ways shoes can remind us of the extraordinary work God calls us to do and how extraordinary God is. And I love this chapter on shoes, and I love it, and I think it's so powerful and important. But as I worked on this and thought through all of this, I had to take a step back from working on all the place shoes could take me. And I had to just connect with the concept of putting my shoes on in the first place. My shoes are the last thing I put on before I leave the house. I don't know about you, but in our house, when you come in, your shoes come off. <laughs> before you go, you can put your shoes on and have a nice day, but they don't go in the house. So shoes are the last thing I put on before I leave. So this week, how God has been speaking through me through this text, it's been a reminder that not only do I need to put my shoes on to go out into the world, but I need to put on the whole armor of God every single day so that as a believer in Christ, as a beloved child of God, I am dressed, I am clothed, for whatever I will encounter in this world that God has for me to encounter, because no two days are the same. So I need to be ready every day, because I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. 
because shoes are the last thing I put on before I leave my house. No longer am I leaving, no longer am I putting them on without asking myself, have you put on the rest of your armor of God today? Since I've been doing that the past few days, it's been changing me, and I can only imagine how it's going to continue to change me, and even how God is going to use me in the world. So perhaps from now on, When you put your shoes on, you might stop and ask yourself that same question. Have I put on the rest of the armor of God today too? I wonder if that is going to change your life and how God is going to use you in this world too. So as your reminder about that, about your shoes and putting on the full armor of God, as I said, you all got your shoes And I was feeling a little bit um, proud of myself because when it comes to shoes, um, if you've ever noticed mine, they're almost always Converse. (laughs) And I thought, hey, how about that? They look like little Converse. So not only are you reminded to put on your shoes and your full armor of God, But when you've got your little Converse keychain, you can remember that your pastor's remembering to do the same thing every day, too. So I hope that you keep these with you, and um, I look forward to hearing how shoes are helping you put on the full armor of God every day, too. Amen. So now that you um, have been, well, let me rephrase that. So you all have shoes on today, right? Okay. If you've slipped them off, that's okay. I do that sometimes too. Um, So I wonder, with your shoes on today, if today is the day that those shoes will help you walk forward, as we sing our hymn of invitation, for you to affirm your faith, for you to reaffirm your faith, for you to proclaim and join this church as a member, to transfer your membership, to do whatever you need to do that God is calling you today, to be a part of this community of faith. Um, Whether it's, like I said, whether you need to you're at a point today where God's just speaking to you and saying, you need to go forward and affirm your faith out loud. You need to um, reaffirm your faith because, you know, we all go through stuff, right? We're new every single day. Uh, Maybe it's because you've been coming here a while and you're like, you know, it's time for me to commit. It's time for me to use these shoes to walk myself forward and say, yes, God, I'm in. So whatever you need this time to be during this hymn of invitation, I invite you to let it be so. And if you are coming forward, I will be right here ready and waiting to receive you with open arms, however I can do that. So let us stand and sing.
Well, I am so grateful your cute little shoes brought you forward this morning. And I'm sure it was... <laughs> oh, you didn't get one? We'll make sure you get two then. <laughs> I know it was more than just shoes. I know it was God and the Spirit working in with you. So um, you are coming forward today to transfer your membership here to this church, yes? And you come from Firestone? Yes. Firestone Park Christian Church. Thank you. Yes. And we have, this is Kathy Buckwalter and Becky Myers and Laura Hartley. I got, I got it. And I didn't even have to, well, I looked just to make sure, but it was turned, so. <laughs> and we are so glad that you have been worshiping with us and you have decided to be a part of this community of faith. And so now I ask you the question we ask all who want to join and transfer their membership to the church is, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, Son of the living God, and proclaim him Lord and Savior of your life? If so, please say, I do. I do. I do. And with that, myself and our elder Doreen Lennon, we extend the right hand of Christian fellowship to you and welcome you into this community of faith. Sorry, my hands are cold. So church, we welcome more people to the family. What a joy, yes? Yes. As we, um, before you go back to your seat, how about we pray together? Does that sound good? Okay. Can I hold your hand? God of abundance, we are so grateful how you continue to help this family grow, to help people connect with one another here in ways that they cannot connect in other places. We are grateful to be the church doing your work here in this neighborhood and community, and we are so grateful to have people like Kathy and Becky, and Laura, help us do the work that you are calling us to do. God, may this family be blessed. May the new members of this family know how much they are loved here, and may they know the blessing that it is to be a part of this community of faith. God, we are just so grateful for this day and all the ways you are working in all our lives. We pray this through the Spirit and through the Christ. Amen. Amen. Yay. I'm so glad you're here. Good, good, good. We do. We are huggers, most of us here. So, okay, thank you. And now we get to, uh, oh, can we sit down? I tripped going up the steps. Yes, we can sit. Okay. You know, it's not about making sure everything happens perfectly, right? God just cares about us and our heart and why we're doing what we're doing. So, you know, we're human. We trip up steps, right? We drop things, we stumble and stutter and all those good things, because, but we're here and we're doing it, and that's what matters, right? <laughs> that is true, that is true, and today I feel like I'm stumbling a lot, but that's okay, because uh, like I said, God's glad we're showing up and we're here and we're doing what we're doing, so I'm okay with that, I'm okay with that. Um, now that we have had an opportunity to affirm our faith, reaffirm our faith, uh, transfer membership, come together as a whole body. We now get to come to sharing in that meal together, that meal of remembrance of just how much God loves us, that God gave his son so that we may have life. So we get to come to the communion table and share in the bread and the cup to remember that body broken, that blood shed for each one of us. And there's nothing we have to do in order to come to this table to be welcome here. We simply come just as we are, because that's all God asks. Just come, just come just as you are, because all are welcome at this table. How we'll share in this meal together is in just a minute we'll sing our communion hymn. And while we're singing, I will go to the table with um, our deacon and our elder. And once we're done singing, we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. 
I will do the words of institution, then our elder will pray. Then we will bring the elements down here. Starting at the back, a deacon will walk forward, letting you know when it's time for you to come forward, if you wish, to partake of this meal. And you can take it right up here, or you can take it back to your seat and take it. You can do it wherever, however you are comfortable. If you are not able or prefer to take it at your seat, the deacon will have pre-made, the pre-packaged communion. You can just let them know and they'll give you one of those and you can take communion right at your seat. If you are a person that needs gluten-free, we have bread for you. They are in the paper cups, so there is bread for you as well. No matter how you choose to participate in this meal, just know that you are welcome to this table because you are loved by God. join together now and pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We come to the table remembering that night when Jesus sat with his disciples, and he took bread, and after blessing it, he gave thanks, and he said, This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the cup of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we continue to seek out your presence, to see you face to face through your word, we remember the instruction the writer of Hebrews saying, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And so, Lord, we continue. We are running the race. We are fighting the fight. And we desire to be strengthened through your word as we share this bread. We pray, Lord, that we will remind, be reminded of your word of instruction, the word to keep faithful your word to continue to look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, 
our forerunner. And certainly, Lord, we desire to be refreshed by your Holy Spirit as a runner is refreshed by the cool drink. So we desire to be refreshed by your Holy Spirit, renewed day by day to the praise of your glory. Lord, we desire that your love fill us anew and that we can share this love abundantly beyond our normal ability or what we thought we could only do to the praise of your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
attention campers attention campers this song is for you i got peace like a river would you all please stand come on up if you can do it we got motions never lived this day before, ever. May you go from this place seeing the extraordinary, extraordinary God everywhere you go, and may nothing be ordinary. Amen. Amen. 